features of uh, the multi-lift and uh, the operation of it. So let's get started. This is a single axis servo driven lift. It's uh, programmable. I have several different uh, profiles available that we'll get into. First I want to start with the safety features of the machine. When you receive this machine it's important that you locate it where you want it and that you use these adjustable legs to level the machine and also you want to anchor those to the floor uh, before you actually put a load on here and start operating the machine. That's very important. Also another safety feature of the machine is the e-stop switch which will shut down all the uh, motion on the machine when that's pressed it'll also illuminate so some other features on the machine let's go over briefly just what maintenance features there are not a lot of them uh, you're going to want to uh, grease the machine occasionally i'm going to say you know every couple of hundred hours of operation uh, you'll have a grease zerk here and here and of course on the other side you have four linear bearings and underneath the guard here uh, you'll have to remove that guard and then you have uh, two bearings under there that have grease fittings there's a synchronous belt under there that, that belt should last uh, uh, probably a thousand uh, operating hours so you're going to probably want to keep one of those on the shelf and um, replace that as necessary I would inspect it uh, when you grease the uh, bearings in there. Let me just show you briefly um, the inside of the electrical pa panel. Uh, this of course is the electrical panel. 110 volt operation, 15 amp service, that's adequate. Make sure you have a good ground. Servos are susceptible to uh, electrical noise. Uh, I might even add at this point that uh, if you have a high frequency source anywhere in the uh, vicinity of this machine you're going to want to make sure you're into a different circuit than that uh, specifically like uh, welding machines uh, high frequency TIG machines anything like that it will affect the operation of the servo quickly what we have here top left uh, is a uh, standard ethernet industrial hub or switch you can plug your LAN into that if you want to access the uh, web server uh, features of the uh, HMI, the human machine interface. Also, the next one over, uh, the MP2300, that's the servo controller. It's actually a four axis servo controller. You're only running one axis on it, so you do have some expansion capabilities. Uh, then you have a few terminals. Uh, the red light you see there is on a relay which operates the brake on the servo. The brake on the servo is a spring set brake which means you have to power that brake to actually release it. So right now the brake is released and what's holding the carriage up is the torque on the servo motor. Anytime you have a blackout or power outage or if you have an error on the drive, a fatal error on the drive uh, where it disables the drive servo drive then uh, it would automatically lock that brake. Three fuses here. The one on the left is for the 24 volt power supply. The next one over is a 110 volt fuse which is the incoming power and then the one on the right there is dedicated to the servo drive. This is the servo drive. No user serviceable parts here. Uh, the next feature over is the 24 volt power supply and then lastly you have a, um, a relay dedicated to the emergency stop circuitry. Here you have a, a small uh, braking resistor that absorbs energy in the case that you have a high load with a rapid deceleration on the servo. That's about it for that. I thought you might want to see that in case there's ever any troubleshooting needs. Let's close this up and take a look at the operation of the machine. I want to start with any time you power down this machine and bring it back up, the servo system needs to be rehomed. Now, I have rehomed it. Um, I think I'll just go ahead and cycle power so I can take you through that. So let me do that quickly. Okay, 
power's off give it 10 seconds or so and power's on now the servo really thinks where it's sitting right now is a zero our home point that's not the case you'll notice you have two sensors back here the upper over travel sensor and the lower over travel sensor the upper over travel sensor also acts as the homing sensor so that would be your zero position and of course it's adjustable up and down if you need to move that anytime you move it of course that's going to move your zero point okay we should be back up here when you come up you're at the main screen on the HMI and that's what you see right here this is basically just a navigation screen how you get around the first thing you're going to want to do is go to the startup screen and you can see that we're enabled which is to the right if you want to disable it that disables the machine right there so let's bring it back up you're enabled to get to the main screen from any screen touch the green home button okay we're at the control screen now what we want to do is jog the carriage close to where the upper limit switch would be this is because the homing sequence is very slow because of the accuracy needed in that uh, system so we have the speed set slow when you do the homing routine so this gets you up there saves you a little time gets you up there close to the sensor as you can see now we just go back to the main screen and what we want to do is select the global screen uh, on the global screen you have two features one has to do with servo homing the other is where you set the manual speed that speed that we just saw as I was jogging the uh, carriage upward you'll see the red light indicating that we're not in a homed mode in other words you don't want to operate this machine in this mode because it doesn't really know where it, where it is you'll see dip position which is on a lot of the different screens it's a read-only uh, field and it's showing 51.229 inches right now we know that's not the case so we're, we know we need to rehome that all you have to do is touch the go home button you can see it moving it'll go up find the upper sensor and actually reverse and come off of the sensor and reset the dip position to zero so you'll see we now have a green light and our dip position is setting at zero now we're ready to run the machine I want to go back to the main screen and show you a little bit about navigating around and show you some of the different screens we'll start with the uh, non-critical non-essential screens informational type screens and we'll work our way up into actually setting this machine up and doing an automatic cycle over here on the right you'll see an about button basically that just tells you uh, how to contact us the manufacturer the global screen as I've already showed you also sh has a feature here uh, where you set the manual speed and that's in inches per minute you can set that from 1 to 120 inches per minute 120 inches per minute is the maximum speed of this machine the system screen this is if you want to enable security which we will need to know before you before we ship this machine out right now it's not enabled it's set up to be enabled if you wanted to secure any of the screens right now we have operator supervisor administrator and factory uh, security in there just let me know if you want to uh, activate that before we send it out and uh, I'll give you another video on how how that works if you want to do that most people with this type of machine don't really need that kind of security but it's there if you need it so back to the main screen I want to show you the diagnostic screen again you see the dip position machine hours is incremented every tenth of an hour when you're in the automatic mode 
Over on the right, you'll see that block has to do with the servo motor. You'll have alarm reset, servo alarm indication, and dip home indication. This dipped home indication is exactly what you saw on the global screen earlier. Servo alarm may illuminate, turn red. If you're in an overcurrent condition, you have too much weight on, too much speed, uh, maybe an under or over voltage condition or, or things like that. And generally to get out of that, you would just tap on the alarm reset button and that'll get you back going again. Okay, now we have production count. You may or may not need this feature. Every time you're in the uh, automatic mode and you complete a, a full cycle, it'll increment this number by one. And of course, all you have to do is hit the count reset to reset that back to zero. Now, let's talk a little bit about the actual setup of the machine. Here we have the setup screen. Everything on this screen, with the exception of these navigation buttons, is read only. How you populate this and actually send it, send this information to the servo is done on the recipe screen or the product select screen. You have two ways of doing that. So here's the way the machine works. When you're in the automatic mode and you hit the begin cycle button on the control screen, you will start here, in this case, let's say two inches, 2.000. You have three decimal places there. And the servo does actually have that precision. You would move downward at 10 inches per minute and, to, and you're moving towards 8.375 inches. But in between the rest position and your ultimate position, you can change your speed as you may need to at two different points along that path. At this time, we have it set up at 10 inches a minute until you reach 5.125 inches. And then we speed up at 50 inches a minute until you reach 7.500 inches. And then slow down until you reach your 8.375 inch um, point. At that point, you start a timer and you stop your motion until the timer elapses. This is a dwell timer. Right now we're set at five seconds. As it's counting down, you'll actually see it counting down in the time remaining. Once it counts down, the servo heads back towards this rest position where it started from. And of course you have two intermediate positions there where you can change uh, your speeds just like you did on the downward path. That's really all there is to it.